My mother always said, you're half Mexican and half white. My family didn't identify as Japanese, but I knew there was something more. When my grandmother showed me my grandfather Herbert's ID badge for the internment camp, I was probably about 10 years old. And she said, but don't say anything to your grandfather because he doesn't like to talk about it. And then from there on, I was always curious. My grandfather is Herbert Hirota. He's the youngest of Wasuke and Rafaela Hirota. My grandpa Herbert was taken from his home with the rest of his siblings when he was 13 years old. I want to know everything about my ancestors. I want to know who I am and where things come from inside of me. How long have you been working on the family history? Uh, about 10 years. Mm in high school. I don't remember a whole lot being taught about World War II. And as an adult, when I joined Ancestry, I kind of educated myself on it. When World War II broke out and Pearl Harbor was bombed by the Japanese Navy, President Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, which ultimately affected 125,000 people of Japanese heritage. The entire Japanese and Japanese-American population on the West Coast was seen as potential saboteurs. Even my grandparents, my parents, my aunts, my uncles, even children. They were scooped up, taken from their homes, lost their jobs, scapegoated, and put into concentration camps all across the country. I'm the director of a history project that looks at the storytelling power of artifacts. I was at the National Archives in Washington, D.C. I pulled Wasuke Hirota's file, and on the top page, it was stamped deceased. And that just made my heart sink. It's the first thing I knew about him was that he died in the camps. So I started looking more into the family history. When we learned about the Hirota family and their file, we used Ancestry to get in touch with them, saying, hey, noticed your tree. We think that we might know some information about your family. Would you like to start a conversation? My great-grandmother, Grandma Ray, she was born in Irwindale, but she spent the rest of her life in Azusa, California. All that area, it was all orange groves. Wasuke Hirota was a Japanese immigrant, and he married Rafaela Martinez, who's of Mexican-American and Chumash descent. This looks like their marriage certificate. This is... Pretty amazing. So it's in Spanish? Yes. They had to go to Tijuana to get married, and her citizenship was revoked, even though she was American-born, because back then you could not marry a Japanese person. And then she regained her citizenship? Years, years later, yes. <laughs> what the government was trying to do was judge loyalty by race. The intergenerational trauma of that has just lasted even until now. And certainly in the case of the Hirota family, they're still searching. What does this mean for their own identity? They were just living their life, and they're just uprooted and taken and separated. So this is the report that the government started to make of mixed marriage families in the Pomona camp. Ray is an American citizen of Mexican descent, mm -hmm. so she doesn't even qualify to be imprisoned. She chose to be in there because of her children and her husband. She wanted to be with her family. Mrs. Hirota and the children desire to return to their home. Mr. Wasuke Hirota is willing to stay in this center. This is basically a statement saying they're going to be separated. Yeah. It's sad. Rafaela, who didn't have to go to the camps, was released, and then the children were released with her. Wasuke was sent to a concentration camp in Wyoming called Heart Mountain. My great-grandfather wrote this letter. Dear sir, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to let our family get out from the camp. The climate of this state is quite different from California. If my wife and little grandchildren were with me, I am sure they will suffer a great deal. I am yours, sincerely yours, Wasuki Hirota. I got the chills kind of reading that. Those are his words. He died of a heart attack two years later, never saw his family again. And Rafaela used to say, he left us walking, he came back in a box. The United States government was trying to break up 
what they thought of as dangerous concentrations of a racial community. And so they succeeded in doing that because after people were dispersed into these prison camps, people were told, don't speak Japanese, don't congregate. And so it had the effect of disintegrating the community. 1950 census of population and housing. Although the sons are half Japanese, under the column which classifies race, they are all classified as white. So it's interesting because this is the 1940 U.S. federal census. And they were of Japanese. They went through a lot. The safer thing to be at that time was white. Being vilified because of your race is so traumatic. In some families, there's a strong sense of shame, and that shame means that you should not talk about it. I think you're studying this history as a real tribute to them. It's a gift. I hope so. <laughs> I always felt lost, so it's, it's really helped build my character. The gathering of this information, reading the archival documents, looking at sites like Ancestry, is a form of learning, but also healing. The two most important people in my life are my two grown sons. They do know they are part Japanese. I think it's important that they know. Thank you.